Yes, Mr. Lloyd, uh, AG, Anil Nandalal, uh, members of the media. Um, we want to use this opportunity, as the Permanent Secretary was saying, to clarify some of the issues that we would have noticed in the press over the last week or so. And hopefully that this would settle some of the issues, but given the nature of what we are dealing with, I would expect that people would engage in even more controversy. Um, we have reframed for a long time, I, I suppose, trying to speak to the media, but it has now become really um, burdensome, I would say, because you're only getting one side or one view, and therefore we feel that we ought to clarify these things. And so today we want to go perhaps in, in depth with some of these matters. And um, we would ask you that any question or clarification that you want, that you seek them today so that we, we can uh, give you the explanations that you want or the explanations that you are seeking. Or if there is anything that there is any doubt that you have in your mind, ask them so that we can clarify them. We don't want these things to linger and people don't understand what we are doing. I would have seen uh, one of the things that I noticed uh, in the press uh, that was uh, out there that the government of Guyana and the WICB, uh, you know that we were engaged in a discussion under the auspices of the CARICOM Secretary General. During those discussions, the team on the government side was led by myself and uh, the Attorney General. We were, uh, and uh, Ms. Elizabeth Harper from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, that was the Guyana team. And we met with the WIC. At that meeting, there were a number of things that were put up for discussions. The WICB had certain positions, the government of Guyana had certain positions. We had a discussion, we were trying to fashion a solution whereby everybody can feel satisfied with an agreement. As we were doing so, on the second day, there was a draft paper which was not agreed to was not agreed to and we were still in discussion unfortunately the WICB team had to leave the country and they were late for the airport and at that point we stopped the discussions and we agreed that we'll continue with our consultation I noticed that in the press that what uh, there was a circulation of a document that purports to be the agreement, there's no agreement. It's still under active consideration and discussion. And I cannot see how people can um, use a document that is a working document to say that we have reached an agreement. How can we reach an agreement if there's no agreement? Then on Saturday, I think it was, as reported by the media, that the WICB would have issued a statement uh, saying that they would have requested of us what are our concerns with this uh, document, and they have received none. I don't know whether they did not see our reply, but on the 27th of January, I wrote on behalf of the government's team to the CARICOM Secretary General, pointing out that we had engaged after the meeting in consultations, and that having had those consultations, we identify parts of the working document that we feel uh, are still objectionable to the government. We have sent that on to the CARICOM Secretary General on the 27th of January. And we, in that letter that I signed to the CARICOM Secretary General, I've explicitly stated that the government side 
that we would like to continue the discussions with the WICB, with CARICOM facilitating these discussions, so that we can reach at some um, agreement or some consensus as to how to proceed. So these discussions are ongoing, and the government is prepared to engage anyone, WICB, we want to engage them so that we can find resolution to our current problems. So I don't know how the WICB on the following day, on the 28th, can then issue a statement to say that somehow the government has not responded to the agreement, or not agreement, to the working document. We have responded. So I would say that the ball is really in their court when again we will meet and of course uh, the CARICOM Secretary General will have a copy of that letter. So I want to clarify that because there seem to be from the um, things on Saturday that I saw in the press that's a one-sided approach to the whole uh, issue, what is happening, how that is unfolding. Then you would have uh, recognized that there are a number of legal issues surrounding um, what has been happening with our cricket. A lot of legal issues. Almost every, every week, apparently, there seems to be a new court case. Right? So that legal aspect, uh, we would like to clarify the whole history of all these legal dealings and where we are currently. Yesterday, we understand that there were a number of rumors flying around. Um, we, we were told that uh, I was instructed to go and open some lock and all kinds of things. I don't know of any such things. We have not been served with any, any paper or anything uh, for that matter. I'm very, very pleased that we have with us the Attorney General, who has been handling, um, his department has been handling uh, these matters on behalf of the government and he would be able to give you a detailed um, description of what has happened with some of these legal matters, where we are with them, so that there is no doubt. We, wh whatever questions you have, please ask them now so that we can clarify any of these legal things. And then you would know that since December we have established the interim management committee to run cricket in this country and that was after the courts of this country the chief justice would have pronounced that the gcb does not have legal a legal personality therefore we can't leave this thing in a vacuum the cricket is so important to our country that we want to continue having cricket in our country. And we have established this interim management committee to ensure that this happened. There mustn't be a gap. We have also identified that there were many things that were wrong with our cricket. And this is not something that happened overnight. We have given uh, the, the persons who were involved in these disruptions and discussions and problems that they were having, we have given them ample time to try to resolve these issues on their own. They are unable to do so. And reluctantly, we have gotten involved. Now, what are some of these issues? I just want to reiterate them so that people understand what we are trying to do. One, there exists, as far as we know, confusion over which constitution is being used by the, the then GCB. Now, if you got different constitutions and they're being used at different times, obviously there's going to be confusion. And so we want to help by having one document that everybody can recognize. And because of that, we have said that one of the things that we'll be doing, that IMC will be doing, is that we'll ensure that there is one constitution that all stakeholders 
cricket people, general public, everybody who got an interest in these matters, we will give you an opportunity to come and hear, hear your views, and all of those views will be taken into consideration as we formulate a new constitution for the cricketing authority in this country. I don't know of any other fairer process that we can have. It's a simple matter. So we are trying to work to get that established because when we spoke to all the concerned parties, everybody flagged this thing that we need to have one constitution. And therefore, one of the priority tasks that we have set ourselves is to help with setting up this constitution. The second thing is that there have been so many allegations of financial impropriety and other improprieties that we want to have a firm come in, hired by the IMC, to do this, to do the investigation. Impartially, and if we have to go outside of Guyana to bring in such a firm, because people might say that the local firms are biased or somehow maybe that government might be able to control them, which is not true, but just for people's comfort, if we got to go regionally and get such a, a firm to come in and do these investigations, we want to do that. So that once and for all, all these issues that we've been hearing of financial impropriety, the allegations of these impropriety, that we can investigate them, issue a report, and so if they're, if they're, if they're there and they exist, we'll find them. If they're not there, we'll say that they're not there. What else can we do? Now, if we are going to do this kind of investigative work, then obviously a couple of things have to be in place. One, that the documents to do the investigation must be made available to this firm, right? Which means that we'll need the cooperation of the persons who would have been there before. They can't want to hide documents are not giving access to the offices for such an investigation. You can't want to lock up the place and don't give the team access to this information. How then would an investigation happen? If you are agreeing that there's a need for this investigation, which would maybe clear people's names, right? Then why are you impeding such an investigation? Why are you locking up the office and don't want to give the people access to it. When this ministry, we have asked the former members of the GCB, we have said to them, please, can you come to the office, because you have the keys, open the door, we have people, witnesses from the state auditors, we have the, the people from the police, are they impartial witnesses? We are going to be there. We take an inventory of the documents that you have on hand and such things that are necessary for these investigations that got to be done, right? We take an inventory and then, you know, we, we, we'll be able to do these investigations. What happened? Having said that and having publicly announced that this is what we're going to do, the former members of the GCB refused to show up refuse to show up, refuse to open up the door so that we can do that. It is in all of our interest to be able to do these investigations. So on one hand, you can say that we are interested in having these investigations and then not cooperate with the investigation. And that's, that's the matter. So we had no choice because we did not want anything that is in that office to be interfered with. So we have put a padlock on the door and we have said to the former mem members of the GCB, when you are ready, please make yourselves available, right? And we would come and together uh, we would do, check these things. I don't know what else is being termed somehow that we are interfering with what they're doing. If we collaborate and cooperate, these things can be get can, can be done quickly and we can dispel with these matters of investigation. Simple thing. 
So I see a whole big story about um, who is being locked out and who is not being locked out and all manner of things. We can resolve these issues. But how would we have an investigation if other people would go there and just um, do all kinds of things and it's an uncontrolled environment? And when we had the discussions with the WICB, we have pointed out these things to the WICB, pointed them out. So one, we would like to do those investigations. The other matter, which is, a, is the custom and practice anywhere in this world, whenever investigations are going to be done, people or persons who are to be investigated must recuse themselves so that a proper investigation can be done. This is standard practice anywhere in the world. Standard. We have said to the concerned parties that one of the things when we'll be doing these investigations, this is one of the conditions that we have to set. This convention that has been established over long periods of time that people deem as fair somehow in this current thing that is happening people feel that this this must not happen that people must not recuse themselves something got to be wrong got to be wrong and that is that is one of the conditions that we have set but somehow the former members of the GCB, the senior hierarchy of the WICB, right? They feel that this is wrong. How can we have fairness? How can we have transparency? How can we have accountability? How can we have a proper investigation? How, how is that possible if these persons are not recusing themselves from the process? to allow for a fair investigation. So we have put that on the table and people have difficulty with that. So you must know these things because it's important when we do the investigation that these conditions are in place and it is being opposed by the former members and by the persons in the WICB. Then we said that we want to develop a cricket development program. And this also, we don't want to exclude people with expertise in cricket. And right now, right now if you look around, what is happening? A lot of people with expertise in cricket, they are being denied the opportunity to contribute to development of cricket in this country. How can we have that? We don't have an exhaustive pool, uh, such an infinite pool of people when it comes to cricketing talent. And the few people that we got who know what to do, you're excluding them. How then do we expect that the, the country's cricket will grow and develop to such a high quality? That's not possible. And look, look, at what the former board had in place for cricket development. What is their vision for cricket development? So we want to fix that and we have set ourselves that task. We have also put a time limit because we don't want to be in this thing forever. Unlike in other territories around the world, where I understand in one country you have an IMC for more than six years, right? We are not doing that. We have insisted that our IMC must be time bound because we want to get in, fix all the administrative problems that we currently have and have fresh elections, get new office bearers and let the cricket board function. We have also said 
and the courts have recommended that we should go to Parliament and get legislation to give the, um, the, the former board legal personality. The government has said we are willing to do so. And from the interactions that we have had with the opposition parties, my understanding is that they are in agreement with that as well. So we are not at cross purposes here. All the parliamentary parties, from what I understand, have agreed that we would go and get legislation and give people legal personality. And maybe other sports body that find themselves in this kind of dilemma, that this, new, this piece of legislation would also give them legal personality. But we have to work together to make sure that this happens. So the IMC, since we have appointed it, we also, in the appointment of that IMC, we try to encourage the past members of the various boards to participate in the IMC. We have given them positions on the IMC. In fact, the board members, the previous board members, would have been in the majority when you compose the entire, the, the entire IMC. Yet some of them choose not to participate, but instead to obstruct, to obstruct this process of trying to fix the things that have been affecting them, not now, for the last two, three years. So it seemed that a handful of people, a very small handful of people, are profiting from the current system as it exists, this chaos that exists. And this to happen, we can't allow a few people who are profiting from it right now to continue to benefit in this way. It is affecting the entire country's cricket. The entire country's cricket. And a handful of people seem not to care about cricket. So the IMC is going to continue to do its work. We have set a time frame and we are working to that time frame. And later on, maybe in the, um, in the discussions, I would ask Mr. Clive Lloyd to talk more specifically on the work of the IMC. And I know he has been dealing with some other aspects, and I'm sure he will want to tell you about that. So this, this afternoon, we want to encourage you all the questions that you have on, on cricket and on these matters. We want to encourage you to ask them because we are going to be very open with you because we have seen too many things in the press that are not reflective of the reality. And we have, we have stayed quiet because we are trying to fix some of these things and talk to people and hoping that good sense would prevail. But it's getting out of hand and we cannot continue to see these distortions in the press and remain silent. So I'll ask you whatever questions that you want to ask today, ask them and let's deal with it. So I'll stop for now and maybe ask some of the others to, to deal with it. Thank you very much.